What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. It's now episode 21. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Say something to us in the comment section. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, make sure to give us a nice little review. Before we start the video, I want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber of the day. Shout out CJ the Great. And uh, we're going to hop right into the video. Now, obviously, you read the title. We're going to talk about the biggest surprises of the NBA season so far. And I'm going to start with the 0-5 Washington Wizards. Now, offensively, they're struggling. You know, um, they're currently ranked 17th in offensive efficiency. Uh, I think one of the reasons for that is because of their lack of coaching. Scott Brooks, like we've said in the past, uh, he hasn't been one of those guys who can really, you know what I'm saying, they don't really run sets. So with that being said, there's a lot of pick and roll action. Uh, Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal, they go ISO a ton. Westbrook hasn't done so too much this season. I mean, they've only played five games, but it's a it's a lot of just watch watching Bradley Beal go at guys and everything. You know what I'm saying? On some James Harden shit. I don't really like seeing that. I like to see everybody. Yeah, I'd like to see everybody get involved a little bit more. But um their spacing on the floor has been horrendous. Uh Bradley Beal, he's shooting 26% from three. Russell Westbrook's 21% from three. And we kind of expect that from Westbrook. I mean, he normally shoots around 30 to 29%, which isn't good at all. But I mean, 21%, you're really outdoing yourself. But uh, Bradley Beal struggling from outside, I think that's a really big surprise because, you know, I believe he normally shoots around like 35% from three. You know, he's pretty efficient for the most part on the offensive end. And it's just been surprising this year because, you know, he hasn't been able to do so. But yeah, like I said, their uh, lack of spacing has hurt them. They're allowing they're allowing the defense to really shrink the floor. You know, with that being said, that kind of hurts Westbrook's production production because you know he likes to get to the mid range jump shot. Uh, he also likes to attack the basket, but you know what I'm saying it's going to be a little bit harder on him on his production because you know it's going to the defense is with them shrinking the floor. It's going to be tougher to attack the creases and also get everybody involved because we know. Russell Westbrook, he's a walking triple-double. Not only is he going to rebound and put up numbers, but he's also going to try to get his teammates involved. So with the floor being, you know what I'm saying, shrunken, it's going to be tougher doing that. Um, and their shooter's not shooting well through these first five games, too. With that, especially with Bertans, because he got that extension, so I would I would love to see him shoot better. And yeah, and he's normally one of the best shooters in the NBA. I'm not sure. Exactly. What, like I said, it's the spacing that's kind of been affecting the rest of those guys. Um, but, I mean, they they just recently got back Rui. Uh, Thomas Bryant, he hasn't been as productive as I would like. He really, I would, I would like to see him tap into his potential. I feel like he can be a defensive uh, anchor yeah, to an extent, least. but he's, he's just struggled on both ends of the ball this year. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, as far as as far as on the defensive end, they've been terrible. I mean, they're yeah. giving up 122 points a game. Yeah. Um, they've never really been good defensively, you know. But like I said, I think Tom, Thomas Bryant, he needs to be more prideful on that end of the basketball. I feel like he can really be an anchor on that side of the ball. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think so, too. And I think this goes in part of the way the coaching is Scott Brooks, the way the lineups he's having, having three guards out there, it's not really helping on the defensive end. Like you stated, they haven't, they're giving up 122 points, but they have three of the three of the five players, um, the NBA worst defenders at their positions. It's uh, Bradley Beal, Thomas Bryant, and Rui. And um, like you said, I would, you would love to see Thomas Bryant be more effective on the defensive end, get, get into guys. And Bradley Beal's never, never been much of a defender, but the stats, the stats don't lie. And when Washington's def- Washington's defense is 10 points, nine, 10.9 points better per 100 possession when he's not in the game. So that's telling something. And um, Rui, I don't know what's wrong with Rui. Rui is a 6'8", 70, 72 wingspan frame and 230 pounds on him. Like you would think that he, he should be able to versatile and be versatile on the defensive end, but he's not. So these guys just really need to lock in and hone in on the defense because giving up 122 points, I mean, you're not going to win a lot of games, and that's that's the problem right now. And then right. struggling on the offense and not be able to get in get in transition, it's not helping them. So they need to figure that out. Right. I mean, as far as Rui, I mean, he's he's only played one or two games, I believe. I think he just came back against. Uh, I think that game that they played Chicago. I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, he hasn't been he hasn't really been a part of the this kind of bad team so far. Yeah. Uh, as far as Thomas Bryant, 
Uh, I feel like he's athletic enough to be intimidating. On yeah, I mean, he's, end. yeah, he's averaging 1.4 blocks. I mean, it's average, but I think it, it could be higher. Right. I mean, but he he's he's a guy. He's not very quick as far as laterally. Yep. Um, he he probably is going to be. I don't watch too much Wizards basketball. I mean, I don't think anybody else does either. But it's it's just the fact that I mean, he's going to struggle guarding the pick and roll and stuff like that. So I mean, that's probably why he he's never been that guy on that side of the ball. But as far as everyone else, I mean. Their offense, it's not good enough to, you know what I'm saying, make up for their issues on the defensive end of the ball. So, I mean, I'd like to see Washington make improvements on that. And that's up to Scott Brooks, obviously. But, yeah, they got to put guys in position to, you know what I'm saying, succeed. But as far as our next surprise, we're going to talk about the Celtics a little bit. And I kind of I want to start it off with uh, Jason Tatum. You know, obviously, he's a great player. He's a potential 50-40-90 guy. You know, he's going to have to do more until Kemba comes back. Because Kemba's, uh, I don't know how long Kemba Walker's going to be out for, but I think he he's out due to that knee injury or whatever it was. I really yeah, can't I remember off the top of my head. But yeah, I mean, my, my biggest issue with uh, Tatum right now is he hasn't really got to the free throw line much. And that's kind of because he's been a very jump shot. Hacker. Yeah, I think he has too. Like, I think he's really forcing jump shots. Like, not really getting, he's not really getting to the spots. I think he's just struggling on the offensive end, like you said. So. He's taking a lot of ill-advised shots in early in the shot clock, and I, I, th- I think the the main problem with that is the fact that you know he's only shooting fourteen percent of his shots are at the basket. That's that's very unacceptable, especially for somebody who's going to be in the MVP conversation. Um, mm-hmm. I think his mid-range game is pretty good, but I mean he could be he could be a lot better and more efficient at that standpoint. I mean he. I think he makes 44 percent of his mid-range jumpers which isn't bad but i'd like to see those numbers increase a little bit more he can do a little bit better um as far as the rest of the issues with the boston celtics i i feel like defense, this is another, yeah i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna get to the defense but as for right now yeah as for right now i, I kind of want to talk about their uh brad stevens okay uh, i'm not i'm not feeling the lineups that they put out there you know i feel I like agree. I feel like the Boston Celtics, they're they're not necessarily top heavy, but they have so many they they have a very deep bench. And I think with all the new acquisitions and you know what I'm saying, young players that they've acquired throughout these past couple of years, they're all kind of trying to figure out how they can mesh well and you know what I'm saying, continue to make a, a deep push in the playoffs and everything like that. But I mean I mean, I was watching the Boston Celtics versus Nets game on Christmas Day, and there was there was a weird lineup that I really didn't like. It, I, it was something like Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, Jeff T, Grant Williams, and Daniel Tice. I mean, for one, they was putting Grant Williams on the block in a dunker spot. They kind of spaced Jason Tatum out on the wing along with Jeff T. I mean, if Tatum's not attacking the basket, that's not going to do much. Not going to work. Yeah. To open to open up shots for you know what I'm saying Jeff T and Marcus Smart because I feel like Marcus Smart for sure is able to you know what I'm saying knock down open shots Jeff Teague he's more of a slasher but I mean with the ball being in Tatum's hands so much and then they kind of they try to stretch it out with Daniel Tice but I mean when Daniel Tice is playing on the block it's kind of awkward because like I said Grant Williams bro like they're putting him in the dunker spot so I mean I think their rotations has been one of the main reasons why they haven't looked too good now we can talk about defense as well like I'm gonna let you start it off with that yeah the defense again it's just atrocious just like the Wizards the Celtics has the the Celtics have a defensive rating of 112.7 and it's currently allowing 50.4 points in the paint and one game that I watched was the Pacers versus the Celtics so bonus and Turner ate Tristan Thompson and and Daniel Tice beat them up in the paint bro um Sabonis had 19 and 10 and Miles Turner had 10 and 7 and so so Sabonis and Turner uh combined for 17 boards to uh Tristan Thompson's to Tristan Thompson Daniel Tice 11 boards and they didn't and so they were just beating him up on the glass, getting after it. Sabonis got to his spots very easy on the block in the mid range, and Turner was just sending, had five blocks that game, just turning, just turning all the shots away. They were just beating them up physically, like, and that's the problem with the Celtics. They never, like, I think Tristan Thompson was a great pickup, but it, you need a little bit more in that front court. I don't know if you agree with that, but I think, I think that's another. Well, he definitely he hurts your spacing. I mean, spacing, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm I, of rebounding. I mean, Tristan Thompson's a good player, but yeah, is he he's a good fit for the Boston Celtics right now? Yeah. Uh, I mean. I mean, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's to be seen. But I yeah. think, speaking on this, uh, that Indiana Pacers game, I mean, Sabonis and Miles Turner, those are all-star caliber players. They I think um, they definitely they definitely did their job against the Boston Celtics that night. I mean, Tristan Thompson, we don't necessarily look at him as like one of the top 10 defenders in the NBA. So, I mean, 
I'm not expecting him to, you know what I'm saying, go out and lock up that type of those type of players. But I mean, as far but as it is, it, but it is concerning though. You know, you don't you don't want to give up all them points in the paint, right? Yeah. And get out aggressive, you know. Right. And speaking of points in the paint, I mean, they they have done horrible rebounding the basketball. I mean, their their defense is worse than you. I mean, last season they were top four defense and offense in the NBA, which made them strong contenders in the Eastern Conference. And right now they're currently ranked 24th in in defensive efficiency so they've dropped 20 spots since last season um like i said they haven't done a good job rebounding the ball and they've really struggled defending dominant players in iso situation and pick and roll situation i mean for example i'm gonna bring up the nets and boston celtics game once again i mean kyrie irving and kevin durant i know those are mvp all-star caliber players but superstars i mean irving was having whatever he wanted that night i believe he put up 37 points uh, I think he shot 16 of 22 from the field. I think Durant did the same thing. I mean, they just they just haven't been able to stop defenders. You know what I'm saying? Anybody on the, on the opposing end. And on top of that, their 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 defense, as far as like in their backcourt, you would think with the with Marcus Smart being you know what I'm saying the gritty defender that he is, they would that would make up for you know what I'm saying Jeff Teague's Jeff Teague's size and everything, but. I don't know. They just haven't been able to get it done on that end of the basketball. And like I said, I mean, they've been giving up a ton of second chance points. That's because, you know what I'm saying, they're giving up too many offensive rebounds to the defense. And they just got to hone in on that side of the ball more. They man. do. And, and and I think Brad Stevens needs to make a little bit of changes. So they, so he puts his team in pos position to succeed. So we, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's not a really an overreaction, but it is, it is, it is concerning going forward. Right. And I mean, as for our next surprise, I'm going to talk about the Golden State Warriors. Now, I know there's a few people that have been I didn't want to make this video. I didn't want to make a sole video for them just because like I I mean, it's obvious losing Klay Thompson is going to, you know what I'm saying? It's going to hurt Golden State because he's one of your he's 50% of your offense literally. I mean, they we've expected Golden State to be a playoff team, but as of right now, do they look like one? I mean, you can you can just hope that they can get better throughout the season as the time goes, but I mean, as far as right now, they they may look like they can play in the play-in game, but I mean, Steph Curry, he didn't start the season off on a hot start. I mean, he's currently shooting 32% from three, which is really weird because, you know, he's a 43% shooter in his career from beyond the arc. Uh, on top of that, you know, he's kind of been exposed as far as like being able to carry a team. And I don't think that we've really looked at, you know what I'm saying, Curry to do stuff like that because you know ever since he's came into the league he's always had assets around him that kind of complement his game you know uh as a rookie he had monte ellis in the backcourt with him and other role players that excelled uh they also picked up clay thompson years afterwards and draymond green as well draymond but i mean ad yeah yeah and i think the main reason why they're struggling obviously andrew wiggins and kelly Oubre, kelly they need Oubre. to step up their game i mean wiggins he's had a He's had win shares of negative 0.1 on the season so far. I think that they played five games, which is, I mean, it's not too many games, but I mean, he's not looking good whatsoever. Uh, if the Warriors want to be good, though, they, he's definitely got to step up his game on that end of the floor. He's got to be a he's got to be a offensive threat. But and this, is, and this is where Steve Curry really needs to really needs to change. Put Kelly Oubre and Andrew Wiggins in spots where they can be successful. Like it's got, they're gonna have to come around. I think Kelly Oubre will come around because. He he shoot he shoots from ten to sixteen feet. He shoots forty two percent from sixteen feet to, to the three point line. He shoots fifty five percent. His average is forty nine percent. So he's very good in the in in mid range. Very good on that off the off the pick and roll and pulling up on the mid range. He's very confident. He's athletic. He's long. Like he gets after. He's a he's a high motor guy. So I'm not really worried about Uber. I think he will come around. It's, the guy that I'm worried about is Wiggins. What what can you do with Wiggins? He's not knocking down shots. He's not. He's last last a day last a days ago on defense. So it's like. What 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 can you do with what can you do with Wigg Wiggins? Nice. Well, I feel like Wiggins for one the 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 reason why Wiggins struggles so much is because I mean for one him and uh, Ubre they're not they're not used to this style of offense. I mean, yeah. and that's why I think Steve, Steve Kerr changed. Yeah, Steve Kerr he definitely needs to modify the offense. I mean, they still run in the offense like uh, they have Clay Thompson and Kevin Durant out there. You sticking Wiggins and Kelly Oubre in those spots, they're not going to be successful. I mean, yeah. Kelly Oubre for one, he's not a playmaker. I mean, he's he can be decent for you on the defensive end, but I mean, offensively, he's been struggling so much that it's been affecting him on the other side of the ball. As far as Wiggins, Wiggins needs to attack the basket more. He needs to put more pressure on the defense. He needs to get to the free throw line. And you know what I'm saying? Put, put Steph Curry and, and his other teammates in position to, you know what I'm saying, have more space on the floor. 
Now, that's why Curry's been struggling so much because, you know, obviously he's going to be the vocal point of the defense. Yeah, he's drawing double teams, so it's kind of hard for him to really do his thing. Right. And like I said, he just hasn't been used to, you know what I'm saying, being the number one guy right. as far as like not having other options that you have to worry about because obviously anybody could double team Steph Curry if you don't have to worry about it, Clay Thompson and, you know what I'm saying, other shooters around you. But quick question though this is just an interesting question to me do you think curry prefers running off ball like you know you know like when they had katie and clay he used to come off you know slip screens or pin down screens off like they could do it with wiseman where he comes off the screens on the catch and shoot do you think he prefers that more than handling the ball or like does he wish that Ubre or wiggins could kind of set him up and take the pressure off him well i mean obviously he would want to you know what i'm saying anybody to take the pressure off him that way he yeah. can you know what I'm saying, sneak, sneak up to the three-point line and get open shots off but I mean as far as him preferring it I don't think it really matters I think he more so is just looking for the best possible shot for him uh with it with like I said with Clay Thompson and those other shooters being on the floor he he definitely excels in off ball uh he moved he's one of the best players off ball in the NBA uh I think like I said uh I mean I feel like I feel like he's best shooting the ball off ball rather than yeah, uh, me too. creating his own shot. I mean, because, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He's kind of a smaller player. Uh, teams might send double teams and things of that nature, but with him not having the assets around him that can, you know what I'm saying, knock down open shots, this kind of hurts his game a little bit. But I would say he's better off ball. What wh Whether he prefers shooting the ball uh, on the run or him having to create his own shot, I mean, I, I'm not sure, but... I think he's better shooting the ball off ball. But, I mean, I think one of the biggest surprises for the Warriors is James Wiseman's play, you know. Yeah, he has been playing good. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've liked everything that I've seen from him. You know, he, he's been a very valuable asset. Uh, he's knocked down shots at a high clip, which helps with the spacing on the floor, like I said. Uh, this also allows open looks at the rim because he's taking away bigs away from the basket, which means that, you know what I'm saying, High flyers like Andrew Wiggins, Marquise Chris, uh, Kelly Oubre, those guys can really finish at the rim. And hopefully that'll help their get get their games going for themselves. But I mean, defensively, he could improve. Um, as as a team, the Warriors, they're ranked 21st in defensive rating. Um, I think Wiseman can help them in that department just because, you know, he can defend the pick and roll. Uh, now, I'm, I'm concerned a little bit when as far as like whenever he's getting switched on to guards and isolation situations because, you know, he doesn't he's he's quick enough to move his feet laterally but i mean sometimes he, he's not disciplined enough on the defensive end you know he, he tries to block a lot of shots like coming into coming out of memphis he was averaging three blocks a game i only i know he only played like three games but it's still a little bit of a concern dude that he you know he he doesn't know what to do on that end of the ball as far as like being disciplined but i think if he's able to hold his end on that side of the ball and give you good production offensively, I think the Warriors will be in a good spot within the, you know what I'm saying, next couple of years. Because they have about a four-year window yeah. left to win the championship. Steph Curry's 32 years old. Klay Thompson isn't that old, but you know what I'm but saying? But you don't, yeah, you don't know how he's going to Yeah, and you don't know how he's going to come back from these two of these severe injuries. And so right but i mean moving on to our last topic the cleveland cavaliers it's actually going to be a positive uh colin saxton and darius garland have been phenomenal i mean saxton he's been very efficient you know he's been looking like a guy you can really rely on to run your offense through uh he's been playing aggressive he's averaging six free throw attempts a game shooting 55 percent from the field and 60 percent from three you know uh, while also averaging 26 points per game um, I think another key addition for the Cleveland Cavaliers was Isaac Okoro. You know, he's not getting too many minutes, but for the times that he is playing on the court, he's been great defensively. Uh, there's been a couple positions possessions that I've seen him play against, like uh, whenever they play in the Pistons, you know what I'm saying? He kind of locked up Derrick Rose, made it very uncomfortable for him late in the shot clock. And he's he's looked like, I really do feel like he has the potential. He has the potential to be a player like a Kawhi Leonard. Obviously, it's going to take him longer to develop on the offensive okay. side of the ball. But I mean, defensively, he's got all the tools. He just has to, you know what I'm saying, continue to progress, yeah, yeah, throw into the body and things of that nature. But I mean, what, what have you liked out that you've seen from the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm very surprised. You know, I was I wasn't really too sure. Like a lot, of, uh, like a lot of people were thinking, how how will Colin Sexton and Darius Garland pair together? And I think this what Darius Garland worked on in the offseason is just incredible. He upped his assist numbers by four points. He's averaging seven point two assists, nineteen. Uh, 
19 points he's shooting 50 50 percent from the three-point line so i mean all his numbers are going up from his from his uh rookie year and i love to see that he's playmaking more he's finding open teammates his iq is getting better and he's very he's helping colin sexton out a lot that backcourt is going to be really really dangerous and and um just remember they don't have kevin porter right now so wait till they get kevin porter back in this lineup they're going to be really scary and scary like scary not right now but you know a few, uh, a few years down the line this Cavs right. team has a very young core that i really like right i think they have the opportunity this year if they continue to play in the way that they are uh they got the opportunity to contend for the you know what i'm saying that play-in seed but uh like you said darius garland he's been phenomenal this year you know what i'm saying throughout these first five games he's averaging 19 points it's up to his assists to seven assists per game. You know, he's really proved that he can be someone that can run your offense and play make for others, you know. And this was kind of questionable for him coming out of Vanderbilt, you know, because he, he was kind of a little bit ball dominant. Sometimes he got over dribble, miss, um, miss open guys, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's good to see him improve on that aspect of the game he's also got a PER of 18.3 not only is he being effective but he's also being efficient uh, but defensively for the Cavs overall they're currently a top five defense in the NBA you know holding their opponents to 108 points per game which is eighth in the NBA actually and they're looking like they could possibly contend for a playoff spot and I hope they can accomplish this but it's like I said when I say playoff spot I mean like six seven eight no no the playing seed like oh the eight, playing seed oh, like eight, nine eight. ten nine, so ten oh, okay right but i mean i think that's all that we have for you guys today uh we appreciate y'all tuning into another episode with us uh make sure you happy like new subscribe. happy new year yeah happy new years make sure you like and subscribe turn on post notifications um but outside of that it's your boy nicey chunga benny i'm here with my co-host greg king and we out we out